Welcome back to Bay Sunday. Please welcome the author of Making It in Real Estate, starting out as a developer, John McNellis. All right, well, you wrote your first book. I did. Tell us a little bit about why you decided to write this book. Uh, I always wanted to be a writer. When I was a kid, if you asked me what's a developer, I would have said, gee, that's somebody that works at a photo lab. I had no idea what a developer was. Mm -hmm. And I always liked writing, but the way my life worked out, I became a lawyer and then uh, I was a real estate lawyer, business lawyer, and it looked to me like the business guys had a lot more fun <laughs> than, the, than uh, the lawyers. So rather than, than stay up uh, drafting contracts, I said, you know, I want to get into the development business. And so that's 35 years ago, that's what I did. I began building shopping centers here in the Bay Area with an older partner and gradually uh, we've built almost four million square feet of shopping centers. Right. Usually like a, a Safeway or a Walmart, raw stores, or with, uh, convenience shopping centers. So what does it take, I mean, to become a developer? Because a lot of it at the beginning is capital. Yeah, well, you, <laughs> you've got to get the money from somewhere, but actually, Kenny, it's easier to raise the capital than it is to find a good deal. If you can find a really terrific deal, uh, and you can, uh, there's, think about it, right now you're getting 0.001% in the bank. Right. So if someone comes to you and says, Kenny, this is a great deal, we're going to make 20% on this, here's how <laughs> we're going to do it, you're going to invest in it. So if somebody's good at it, uh, it, it tends to work out. The hard part is finding good deals. Right. What, what's, what are some of the... Um What's some of the advice and some of the tips that you give out to some of those people who are looking to make it big in real estate? A lot of people think, you know, flipping this house, I'll be able to make this much money. Yeah, I don't advise people to flip houses. Uh, what I do advise is, uh, is to start small, uh, starting with a, a house or a duplex. Starting in, the, the classic advice is buy the worst house in the best neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. uh, buy something that's just a piece of junk but that can be fixed up. Uh, and the, one of the good parts about real estate is what you learn just buying a fixer-upper house, those lessons, those skills, those are scalable. So if you learn how to do that, you can gradually go from there to building, let's say, a $20 million shopping center. Right. It's the same skill set. You just have to add zeros and you have to add credibility. You, you've got to find someone who will give you the capital to do it. What are some of those lessons that you learned early on? Well, being cautious. Uh, the guys who flip houses <laughs> That's a great way to make money in a rising market and a great way to go broke in a falling market. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. You're either 100% sold or you're 100% vacant. And right now, I think the market is turning. So a lot of the fellows who are flipping houses are in for a rude awakening. Well, let's take a look at the San Francisco market, the Bay Area market. Uh, there were some recent reports saying that the rent in San Francisco, um, I, th I believe last month, went down a little bit. What's your prognosis for the future of the Bay Area market? Oh, you're talking about residential? Residential. Yeah, let's stick with residential. I think what's happened is prices have risen to such a level that no matter how many new jobs are created, the jobs, the, the salaries for jobs are not enough to pay the rents on these new apartments. It takes right now, in Mountain View, I just read, an average two-bedroom apartment, uh, I think it's like 3500 a month, mm -hmm. you need to make 175000 a year in order to have that be 25% of your, you know, your rental um, cost, be 25% of your gross income. And that's the traditional yardstick of affordability. So what's happening, you see thousands of units being built all around the Bay, but they are, they're priced too high. Mm -hmm. So I think what's going to happen is that rents are going to drop. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not sustainable right now. What about commercial? Uh, retail, retail is actually what my world, retail is uh, shopping centers. It's a little more disciplined because you can't just charge the rent that, that you want to. The rent is tied to how well, uh, for example, a supermarket. It's tied to their sales. So if a supermarket sales are flat, the rent's going to be flat. So retail tends to be a little bit stodgier. It, it doesn't have the the, the uh, peaks and valleys that uh, multifamily does or office for that matter. Right. So what's next for you? I know you've, you've built several shopping centers. What's next on the horizon? Uh, I love business. You know, uh, working deals, it's like working a, a New York Times a crossword puzzle. They're fun. They're difficult to do. Uh, we, over the last 35 years, have averaged maybe two new projects a year. I see us doing that. It, 
into the future. The book was just uh, an outgrowth of a real estate column that I write for the Registry magazine. And it, it's aimed for young men and women in, in their 20s, early 30s, who are working full time, maybe for a big corporation, maybe as an architect or a contractor. But they're, they're starting to think, gee, maybe there's another way to do this. Maybe I should be an entrepreneur. So the book contains kind of practical advice about running your own development company, about starting out. All right, John, thanks for joining us here this morning. Hey, it's my pleasure. Absolutely. For Thank more you. information, log on to ULI.org. For Urban Land Institute, that's ULI.org. We'll be back after this.